picture is really bleak for me um it looks like fucking boomtown another festival that i always wanted to go to that i was actually considering going to next year has maybe been acquired by live nation which you know already means it's the beginning of the end people always have so many good things to say about boomtown how well it's run even though it's all that dmb and jungle and bass shit and basically white people music it's still basically one of the most fun festivals i even hear security guards I remember i forgot where we went we went to one festival and one security guard was even raving about boomtown to us a security guard saying how good it was so obviously it's got a really great reputation and you know the people obviously make those kind of things but when live nation starts getting involved and starts investing in these kind of things obviously for people that organize boomtown it's great for them you know it's a great payday it allows them to do more interesting and cool things that provide better product for the fans and whatnot but if you're an actual long-term fan of boomtown be going for a while you have to be worried about this you definitely have to be worried because I've, I've never known a big corporation like live nation to get involved in these sort of festivals and whatnot and for it to turn out good it rarely if ever turns out good it's always kind of the beginning of the end which is of course to be expected too because if you're boomtown like i said before about the lgbtq kind of plus events that are happening here in london and the kind of alternate queer scene really becoming popular and they're having issues with kind of straight men going and you know diluting their spaces unfortunately if your product becomes really successful and really popular you're going to get people outside of your community wanting to also have a bit of piece of the fun wanting to also get involved and that can also mean problems isn't it? because you know you want to keep your thing pure but if you want to grow you want to survive you want to evolve and whatnot you're going to have to maybe acquire you're going to have to maybe open yourself up to gear acquired have investment come in and obviously those investments are not going to come in with just you know no influence and no hearsay they're going to want to have their opinion be known they're going to want to maybe add artists in that you don't want to book like it's just going to be a nightmare so i'm really nervous about this news and again i haven't been to boomtown yet ever so i can't claim any ownership on it but it's just really distressing news i think for everybody involved anyway the article says as follows Live Nation has acquired a minority stake in one of the UK's largest independent festivals, Boomtown. Dennis Desmond, the chairman of Live Nation UK Island, and Stuart Douglas, the CEO, were appointed as directors of Boomtown Festival and his parent company on July 6th, according to Company's House. Damn. Along with finance manager Mark Nichols, the two joined the event's co founders, Luke Mitchell and Christopher Rufford. Mitchell and Rufford have both been on the boards of directors since 2009, 2011, and are both based in Bristol. A representative of Boomtown told Mixed Mag for us as a business, our vision has always been very clear. We're a festival like no other, a full living theatre which is set around friends community and creative spirit like many other businesses in our industry due to covid our landscape has changed and to stay ahead we had to adapt and be agile and it's been very tough few years oh man covid really fucked up a lot of people in it right they probably would have never entertained this sort of shit before covid right you can just imagine what the scene was like pre-2019 it was vibrant vibrant popping off and then it kind of completely dies post 2019 and it, some of it has hasn't ever really recovered people have kind of had to move to different sectors like even djs had to kind of quit careers and do other things because the gigs haven't been popping the way they have been even for me but a guy that plays in like bars and pubs at a level i've never really gone back to my level of playing beforehand and i was playing every single week in different places not even in one place so it's absolutely crazy and tragic it continues one decision that we came to in the last few months as a direct result of the rising cost in uh, staging um, such an epic and complex show was to seek investment and minority stake in the business from some of the most experienced names in the industry, SLM. So they gave away 9, 18 and 18. Oh, God, man. I, look again it's a business man this is what you have to do to keep the lights on they have many many people they look after many families that depend on that wage or that salary from boomtown people that they've had you know I mean, imagine if they started this whole thing off the back of being university friends or living in the same area in bristol you know this is a family affair so there's loads that goes into this sort of stuff so to me to sit here and be a hips and be like oh they should have kept it independent i mean it's not i have no right to say that but let's just be honest you know, let's just be clear and honest this this doesn't look good for the future we're gonna st imagine you start seeing fucking Anne marie playing at fucking boomtown going forward and shit it's gonna get really commercial really quickly it continues this decision will not only allow boomtown to continue its vision to be one of the most exciting festivals in the world but it also ensure the flexibility to continue to uphold independence on our all decisions around business and creativity it always starts like that but it never ends like that no one's going to give you money um to lift to kind of make sure your company is able to pay salary and you know do interesting things going forward and not have any say so in what you do creatively as a business it's not going to happen it's just impossible i've been in too many startups where you know investors 
say that kind of thing to get the founders on board and whatnot to accept their money and then as soon as stuff starts to become a bit edgy they soon you know start to kind of throw in their two pence and whatnot and it's hard to tell somebody to shut up that gave you money um, the Hampshire Festival, which debuted in 2009, was included in for performers such as Wu-Tang Clan, Lauren Hill and Gorillaz and Kofi, Manus M.I.M. Moore. The 67,999 cap event, most recent edition, was held over two previous weekends of the 10th and the 14th in Winchester. This year's edition welcomed Rizma of Sharada. There was also a set of the Boomtown received 991 grant from the UK government of Cultural Recovery Fund, which organizers claim would ensure the festival's existence being forced to cancel the there. Okay, so I guess this wasn't enough then. Gee, so much. It must be, it must cost a lot to run a festival, innit? A production company, all that sort of stuff. Imagine my operation cost are year to year to run that shit. Fuck me. Nearly a million wasn't enough to keep them afloat. They needed more. Bumba routed, man. And that's just to keep them running, not, you know, money they need to make on top. That's just to keep them operating. Speaking about Live Nation's small stakeholder, Boomtown's um, Chris Rutherford said, we are excited by the possibilities of this move. For us, it's business as usual. We still hold the keys. We're still running the show. All right, whatever you say. We have the safety of knowing that there is now a group support to help us support through the tail end of these rocky years, provide the stability for the future. This means we can continue to thrive and provide employment for one of the best festival crews in the world and deliver our audience the magic that is Boontown. See, that's the thing. Like I said before, I found out about Boontown through like friends, right? It's, a, it's one of the festivals you always hear about word of mouth. And then I also have security guards at festivals recommended to me that say, hey, why are you coming here? You should go to Boomtown. So clearly a lot of that has to do with how they organize it and a lot of it as well. Because again, many great clubs, many great festivals have mostly been defined by the staff. And staff and that, from what I've been reading online about people, especially people in Berlin who have basically said, you know, one guy I read who had a club where he basically said, there's no point in me opening up again because all my staff have left. And essentially saying those staff are what made this club and they were the best people. I can't find people that, that good again because they've all gone into different, you know, careers or decided to change and do other things or move away blah 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 so clearly staff within like hospitality live events clubbing festivals are really important even if they're just volunteers getting the right people in to set the right mood will do it goes a long way and i know it myself you know you only need one really aggro search or one really rude bartender or one you know whatever it may be cold person to kind of throw you off the complete time you're on there and to kind of set a bad precedent but if you have a couple of good interaction with people suddenly your mood lifts and you're kind of really looking forward to the event what you're going to do who you're going to see and what it just completely changes the landscape of it so the fact that they keep talking about the staff members and the family and the community clearly that's the bedrock of the festival that they put on they kind of basically set the precedent of it and they and they're the ones that preach the gospel of boontown because i heard about it do you know what i mean and i'm a nobody it continues um ian evans the owner of ime music was hired by live nation earlier this year since then the company has added to his staff by hiring maddie arnold who was previously a promoter live nation has also purchased a london-based music and arts company what's that one um parallel lines promotions mixed magazine so yeah let's see man hopefully it doesn't mean the beginning of the end of life of boomtown because i would like to go especially during you know it's good years let's say and not when it gets too commercial but again they've got a great product people want to get involved people clearly love it um they've clearly been able to do it a lot independently i'm sure that's why people at live nation want to invest because they looked at the books like hold on you're able to do this all independently alone okay cool you know what i mean they're just they're just probably licking their lips of what they can do if they kind of pump in some money and give them their contact books and whatnot blah 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 but hopefully this doesn't spell the beginning of the end hopefully it doesn't spell the beginning of the end and then moving on here we have some fucking amazing amazing pictures of Houghton Festival that Mix Mag took that kind of made me really pissed off that I didn't go especially to go see my flipping DJ hero in terms of Ricardo Villalobos I don't have a lot I have him I have um, DJ Harvey I have David Mancuso obviously um who else i have as a dj hero on my top i don't really have many actually people who actually would be bothered to see but anyway it doesn't matter ricardo Villa was definitely one of the top ones that i definitely like and he was definitely somebody that i wanted to go see at that festival but again i just wasn't bothered about doing the whole camping thing i was very i was very kind of mentally ill prepared because i wasn't aware that it was an entire camping trip festival thing but also festival camping festivals are known to be fucking 
amazing right the fact that you kind of surrender yourself to this whole experience you go there and kind of unplug from the outside world usually networks doesn't really work too tough there you go and meet new interesting people it all kind of works really really well when you go and do it properly so i should have maybe exposed myself to it fully but i didn't of course because i'm an idiot so that aside the festival pictures that Mix Mike took looked amazing. The article link uh, title says, Lifting the Curse, House and Festival is finally back and better than ever. So, you know, the first ones that come back, the first festival back after that, you know, pandemic are always going to be amazing and eclectic. Look at the crowd there. It looks fucking sensational. Craig Rich is there searching through his records. I can't wait to obviously go when I do end up going there. I will end up actually going. I'm pretty sure of it. But, man, this is definitely FOMO. A lot of FOMO there. Check out the pictures. But again, I just wasn't, I just, I don't know, man. I just didn't get myself prepared mentally to go to a festival out in a stick somewhere and actually hang out properly. I should have probably done that beforehand. But hey, lesson learned, lesson learned.